I'm back in Joshua chapter number one. Joshua chapter number one and verse one. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying. So after the death of Moses, we talked about that last time. There's going to be a chapter with your death. You will die, according to Hebrews 9.27, but as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. So you will die. Are you in the fight and training someone to take your place? Moses has a successor. His name is Joshua. Moses was in the fight and trained someone to take his place. Moses is called the king in Jeshurun. But it says, now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord. He may have been a king, but he's servant to the king of kings. And the thing about Moses, Moses pictures the law. It's through. And now you're under grace. Pictured by Joshua. Joshua pictures Jesus Christ. The law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Now Joshua was Moses' minister. Now after the death of Moses... The servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister. So Joshua was Moses' minister. So before you lead, you need to be a servant because leading involves serving. That's why it says Moses the servant. Moses was the leader, but he's servant to the king of kings. So Joshua... Got good practice being a servant under Moses. So don't be like these people that can't serve. They just got to be over everything. They got to be the leader of everything. Leading involves serving. So after the death of Moses. Now Moses missed the promised land. But he got something a lot better after a death. He got to be with the Lord, and a believer shouldn't worry about death. We are in a straight betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better, Philippians 1.23. So after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass. Note that phrase, it came to pass. The phrase is 457 times in the Bible, it came to pass. Yeah, I looked that up, and it's around 457 times you see at least the phrase, it came to pass. And whatever bad things you're going through will come to pass. And you know the verse 2 Corinthians 4.17, For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. You know, when you're going through uh, troublous times, Remember, it's going to be over soon. So after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. Go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, Unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. So he tells them to go over this Jordan. Jordan is a picture of death to self. So he's going to go through this Jordan. And he's going to go over this Jordan to inherit possessions. Jordan also pictures physical death. Jordan means descend. It means descend. That's significant as well. So he says, go over this Jordan. And since it means descend, you know, that kind of reminds me of Luke 14, 11, where it says, he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. 
So by going through the Jordan, they're going to descend. They're going to humble themselves. They're going to listen to the Lord. You know, put their worries and fears behind and listen to the Lord. Then they're going to humble themselves. So he says, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people. So note that it says all this people. So this pictures how the spiritual promises are for all the church. And he says, I do give them. God ha also has already given you things you haven't even gotten yet. Look at verse 13 and 15. It says, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God hath given you rest and hath given you this land. He's given them rest. He's given them land already. They may not feel like it yet because they haven't got to it yet, but he's already given it to them. He's given them rest. He's given them land. It says in, in verse 15, Until the Lord hath given your brethren rest as he hath given you, and they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God giveth them, then you shall return to the land of your possessions. So he's given them land. He's given them rest. So God speaks as if it's already accomplished. Now to you, it feels like you haven't gotten it yet. But God's speaking as you're, you, when it comes to me and you, he speaks as if we've already got it. All right, back to verse two there. He said, I do give to them. So the Lord speaks as if it's already there. Just like he's already sealed us and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts, 2 Corinthians 1.22. And he's already made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, Ephesians 2.6. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave. He's just, he's a giver. He's given people things they don't deserve. That's grace. It says in verse 3, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Every place that have I given. He's already gave it before they even set foot on it. Before you even set foot on it, he already gave it. You know, the Lord will bruise Satan under your feet shortly as it says in Romans 16 it says the soul of your every place that the soul of your foot shall tread upon that have I given unto you and in Romans 16 he's going to bruise Satan under your feet shortly you think about this Jesus already walked through the shadow of death for you on foot to give you victory over death, hell, and the grave. He destroyed him that has the power of death, that is the devil. You know, when Jesus Christ came, he took on the likeness of sinful flesh and then never sinned one time. His feet were flesh. He walked on them. He walked on his own flesh. You know, he's, he's every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you. He's gotten the victory over the flesh, the world, the devil, the grave, death. He's got victory over it all. So every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon. So Jesus walked through the valley of the shadow of death, and it is his. It's his now. Death is swallowed up in victory, 1 Corinthians 15, 54. You know, 1 Corinthians 15, 57 says, Thanks be unto God which giveth us the victory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Ephesians 1.22. And hath put all things under his feet. All things under his feet. So every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon. That have I given unto you. As I said unto Moses. It says from the wilderness and this Lebanon. 
even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. So Lebanon, from the wilderness, and this Lebanon, Lebanon is the highest place of Israel. This is a picture of the third heaven. And he says, from the wilderness and this Lebanon unto the great river, the river Euphrates. It's going to be their coast. It's as good as theirs, basically. And we also have an inheritance that is incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. 1 Peter 1, 4. Just as God has given them this, and it's as good as theirs. He's given that when we got saved, he gave us an inheritance that is incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away. Now, verse 5, Joshua 1, 5. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. This is picture of complete victory in Christ. Joshua, a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ, can't lose. And in Christ, we can't lose. We got all these promises of how we are winners. There's not going to be any man able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. Joshua is given this great promise that no man would be able to defeat him. This pictures our complete victory. You know, in Romans 8, 37 through 39, let's look at those verses. You know, most likely you've got them memorized. In Romans 8, 37 through 39, Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors, more than conquerors, for him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. In Christ Jesus, I'm more than a conqueror. In Christ Jesus, there shall not be any man able to stand before me all the days of my life. 1 Corinthians 15 57, but thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 2.14, he always calls us, us to triumph in Christ. No creature can take away my eternal security all the days of my life. Nobody can stand before me in that sense. All the days of my life and all the days of your life, you have everlasting life. John 3, 16. As long as Jesus is alive, you've got victory. And he's alive forevermore. Revelation 1, 18. So he says, there shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. Joshua has this promise. Why do you think he was so brave and courageous? He says, As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. So, And you think about this. He's with you even more than he was with Joshua. You have Christ in you, the hope of glory, Colossians 1.27. And he's not going to fail you. Uh, if you put God to the test, he always passes. Now, verse 6, Be strong and of a good courage, for unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. Now, just like I said Jesus is a picture of, or Joshua is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ, Jesus is also going to give an inheritance. He's going to give you an inheritance. Look at Isaiah 53, 12. Isaiah 53, Verse 12, and I will make, man, that was 54, Isaiah 53, 12, therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, 
because he hath poured out his soul into death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. He's going to divide the spoil with the strong. And you will get an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away. Jesus is going to give, divide out an inherent, inheritance to the saints, just as Joshua divides for an inheritance the land. But he tells them, be strong and have a good courage. Ephesians 6, 10 says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. You know, you need courage. When you have the guts to face danger with boldness, that's courage. But you need to be strong and have a good courage. Deuteronomy 31, 6. Deuteronomy 31 and verse 6. It says, Be strong and have a good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Kind of the same verse there. And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and of a good courage. For thou must go with this people into the land which the Lord hath sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee, neither forsake thee. Fear not, neither be dismayed. Joshua 10.25 In Joshua 10.25 it says, And Joshua said unto them, Fear not, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage. For thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom you fight. And afterward Joshua smote them and slew them and hanged them on five trees. And they were hanging upon the trees until the evening. So you see, he's taking on everybody. No man's able to stand before him all the days of his life. He's strong. And have a good courage. First Chronicles twenty two thirteen. And first Chronicles twenty two thirteen it says, Then shalt thou prosper, if thou takest heed to the to fulfill the statutes and judgments with the Lord which the Lord charged Moses with concerning Israel, be strong and of good courage, dread not, nor be dismayed. First Chronicles 28, 20. First Chronicles 28 and verse 20. And David said to Solomon his son, Be strong and of good courage, and do it. Fear not, nor be dismayed. For the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, until hast thou hast finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. You see it over and over again. Second Chronicles 32, 17. Second Chronicles 32, 17. It says, he wrote also letters to rail on the Lord God of Israel and to speak against him, saying, As the gods of the nations of other lands have not delivered their people out of mine hand, so shall not the God of Hezekiah deliver his people out of mine hand. But he does deliver Hezekiah out of their hands. And look at what it says. In Second Chronicles 32 and verse 7. Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid nor dismayed for the king of Assyria, nor for all the multitude that is with him, for there be more with us than with him. Now he's going to tell you, the king of Assyria, he's going to write letters to you and rail on the Lord God of Israel that gave you these promises. And he's going to say that God can't deliver you out of his hand. But the Lord does and he can and he will just as he did for Hezekiah.
All right, back to Joshua 1. Only be thou strong and very courageous. Only be thou strong and very courageous that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. So it said all the law. And it said, turn not from it. So you stay on the good and narrow way. And if you'll do this, you'll prosper. That is, you'll be successful. You'll succeed whithersoever thou goest. So the word is profitable everywhere that you go. You're going to prosper everywhere you go when you base it around the word. And all the law. The whole Bible is for me. It may not be all to you, but the whole Bible is for you. Second Timothy 3.16 says it so well. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. All Scripture. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the men of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. If your body's the temple of the Holy Ghost, you want it to have have that body truly furnished unto all good works. All the law, he says, turn not from it. Stay on the good and never way. Don't bring shame to his name by turning from it to the right hand or to the left. Don't go down the path of the wicked. Don't go in the way of the transgressor. Stay on the path. Stay on the right path. And the Lord is your God. He tells you where to go. Just like he's going to tell Joshua where to go. All right, verse 8. Joshua 1, 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law that is according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. So, good success. If there's good success, there's bad success. You know, a lot of what people think is success today is actually, it is success, it's just bad success. You know, you take someone like Taylor Swift, she's very successful. And you hear so much about her, that's bad success. Uh, she is a hard worker, but she's an evil worker. You know, the devil... It's harder for the devil to use a lazy person. So the more of a worker they are, the more he can use them. And the more the worker you are, the more God can use you and make you a good success. Now the success of this world, uh, it's a lot different than what God considers to be a real success. And for you to be a good success, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. And you think about the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus knew by heart what was written. It's like he says in Matthew 4.4, 4, it is written. Matthew 4.6, it is written. Matthew 4.7, it is written. Matthew 4.10, it is written. I need to have those verses. On, I need to have verses that I can just say off the cuff to fight battles. And the only way I'm going to do that is meditate therein day and night, as the verse says. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. So this book of the law, and you see all Joshua had at this time was what God had given to Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And I guarantee you he had that thing to where he could say it off the cuff. And we've got the whole thing, Genesis through Revelation. We've got even more than he had. we got even more ammo. So we need to read it. Isaiah 34, 16, Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. Don't let uh, this book of the law cease to come out of your mouth. This book of the law shall not depart 
out of thy mouth. You know, 1 Peter 4.11 says, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. The oracles of God is what God said. If you're going to speak, let it be the oracles of God. Let it be what God said. Ecclesiastes 5.2 says, Let thy words be few, unless you're going to speak the oracles of God. You know, in Matthew 12, 34, it says, Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. What's on your heart? Do you got the word hid in your heart? If you do, that's what's going to come out. That's what you're going to want to talk about. Like in Jeremiah 20 and verse 9, he said, But his word was in mine heart as a burning fire shut up in my bones. He couldn't help but talk about it. In Luke 9, 44, it says, Let these sayings sink down in your ears let it go down to your ears down into your ears and psalm 119 11 it says thy word have i hid in mine heart out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh you got to meditate it therein day and night and was it saying psalm 1 2 his delight is in the law of the lord and in his law doth he meditate day and night you know you pray without ceasing Read the scriptures without ceasing. I know you can't carry around the Bible all day, but you can find a way to get the word in. So he says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. All that is written therein. And you know the great verse, John 21, 25, where it says, And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written, every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books. And I heard uh, Bob Alexander talking about this verse. He said this is the verse that changed the way he looked at the Bible. He said before he was just seeing how many times he could read it through, and he... he Made it to, he got up to like 70 something times reading it through and then he realized if every word was hand picked because you know Jesus has did so much that even the whole world couldn't contain the books so that shows that every single word was hand picked for the 66 books of the Bible this shows that the Lord hand picked every word for the Bible out of an infinite amount of words so that means every word is so important. So he needs to slow down and really look at every word, not just reading through, so, seeing how many times he could read through it. So every word is precious, and it will make thy way prosperous. Just like in Psalm 1-3, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The man that is in the word day and night, everything that he's going to do shall prosper, whithersoever thou goest. It should go where you go. You need to get you a pocket Bible. You need to get you a Bible to put in your lunchbox. I got you get you a Bible in your freezer jacket. That's where I got my Bible in my freezer jacket. I got a Bible in my lunchbox. I got a Bible in my pocket. I got a Bible in my car. It should go where you go. In Psalm 138 too, it says, For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. So this is the book that has it all and you think about people they love movies they love novels they love shows well the bible's got all that the bible's got action you think about action movies men love action movies the bible's got action you know in revelation 12 7 it says there was war in heaven we was that remind you of star wars in second chronicles 14 9 through 13 king asa by the help of god defeats one million Ethiopians. Asa and his army beat the one million Ethiopians. Samson slays a thousand men with the jawbone of an ass in Judges 15, 15 through 16. You can't beat that action. The Bible's got drama. Consider 2 Samuel 11, David and Bathsheba. Consider 2 Samuel 13 through 19, David and Absalom. Consider the whole life of Jacob. A big drama. Uh, that women like drama well the bible's got that the bible's got comedy consider the life of peter just always doing something something funny 
Consider how God smites the uh, Philistines with emeralds. What you would call hemorrhoids. 1 Samuel 5, 9. Consider Balaam's conversation with his ass in Numbers 22, 28 through 30. You see, it's, it's comedy. The Bible's a love story. For God so loved the world. John 3, 16. Greater love hath no man than this. John 15, 13. Consider Jacob and Rachel. Consider Adam and Eve. He died for his bride. Jesus Christ died for his bride. See, the Bible's a love story. The Bible's got horror in it. You like horror movies? Well, the Bible's got that. Consider the locusts in Revelation chapter 9. Consider hell on earth, Revelation chapter 6. Consider the lake of fire, Revelation 20, 14. The Bible's got action. It's got drama. It's got comedy. It's got love stories. It's got horror. And... You know, the common sayings we say, the Bible's got all the common sayings. You know, in, uh, in Daniel 5, 5 through 8, they couldn't read the handwriting on the wall. There's that common saying. In Philippians 1, or Philippians 3 and verse 2, he says, beware of dogs. In 1 Kings 21, 23, for the dogs. Ecclesiastes 10, 20, a little bird told me. Judges 4.21, she hit the nail on the head. Genesis 27.22, you can't trust your feelings. Romans 8.18, 8, I reckon. Zechariah 2.6, ho, ho. You didn't know that was in the Bible. Zechariah 2.8, apple of his eye. Ecclesiastes 10.19, money talks. Exodus 32.8, holy cow. Psalm 72, 9, lick the dust. Psalm 78, 66, I'm going to kick your butt. <laughs> All these common sayings you use are in the Bible. You know, when you lead someone to the Lord, you help fix their eternity. When you lead someone into a love for the Bible, you help fix their present walk. That will lead to eternal rewards for them at the judgment seat of Christ. Something that's lacking is people's leading to leading people to maybe love preaching or love preachers. You need to leave people lead people to a love, a genuine love for the scriptures. So Joshua one eight, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. I didn't start becoming a success until I got saved and in the Scriptures. And it says in Joshua 1, 9, Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the good Lord God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Now, does that not sound it like it's in complete contradiction to what the news is telling you, to what Facebook and TikTok and YouTube videos are telling you? This is saying, be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For the Lord God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. All the stuff you're intaking in you most of the time is stuff trying to make you afraid, trying to give you the spirit of fear not of power and of love and of a sound mind. So just as we have Christ within us, the hope of glory, Colossians 1, 27, Joshua, he doesn't have it as good as we got it. We got Christ in us, the hope of glory, but the Lord's going with him whithersoever he goes. It says in verse 10, Then Joshua commanded the offers of the people, saying, Pass through the host. So just as Jesus has the preeminence, Joshua has the preeminence here. It says, Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the host, and command the people, saying, Prepare you vittles, for within three days you shall pass over this Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God giveth you to possess it. So just be prepared. God's going to work out the rest. He told them, prepare you vittles. Prepare you some food. For within three days, you're going to pass over this Jordan. 
to go in to possess the land, which the Lord God giveth you to possess it. But he says, be not afraid. You know, they got three days of suspense here. And that would cause some people to cry out to God that hadn't been crying out to God. All they needed to do was prepare some food. And the Lord takes care of the hard part. You see, do your best. God is going to do the rest. Now, verse 12. And to the Reubenites, and to the Gadites, and to the half-tribe of Manasseh, spake Joshua, saying, Remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God hath given you rest, and hath given you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your cattle shall remain in the land which Moses gave you on this side, Jordan. But ye shall pass before your brethren armed, all the mighty men of valor, and help them. Until the Lord have given your brethren rest, as he hath given you, and they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God giveth them. Then you shall return unto the land of your possession, and enjoy it, which Moses, the Lord's servant, gave you on this side, Jordan, toward the sun rising. So, he's talking to these, the two and a half tribes here, the Reubenites, the Gadites, and the half tribe of Manasseh. And the thing about them is, in Numbers 32, 1 through 23, these two and a half tribes wanted to stay on the wrong side of the Jordan. You see, the land that they were going to get was on the side of the Jordan before you cross it. You see, they're, they're allowed to do this, but they have to go with Israel through the Jordan and go in onto the other side to help fight the war and fight the battles to help the, everybody else possess their land. Now, as verse 14 said, their wives and their little ones and their cattle, it's going to remain in the land that they chose on the wrong side of the Jordan. But they got to go through and help fight the battles. So these, these two and a half tribes here, they picture a Christian who does the Lord's work, but his heart was back there in the in the world and these two and a half tribes have already received their allotment on the east side of the jordan you see that numbers 32 17 through 18 and they had gotten assistance conquering land on the east of jordan from the other tribes now it's time for them to return the favor and assist their brethren on the other side So they, he says, your wives and your little ones stay on the, stay on your side of the Jordan here. So no women in combat. And they're going to pass before their brethren armed. Just like you need to do, Ephesians 6, but on the whole armor of God. I'm in verse 14 here in Joshua chapter 1. So you, just like Galatians 6, 2, bury ye one another's burdens. Just because you have your possession doesn't mean you shouldn't keep fighting. Think about that. You've already got some stuff, and you've already got an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. That don't mean you need to quit fighting. You need to put on the whole armor of God and keep going. He says in verse 15, Until the Lord have given your brethren rest as he hath given you, and they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God giveth them, then ye shall return unto the land of your possession. So when they go through, help them fight the battle on the other side, they get that conquered, then they can come back to their wives and their children and their cattle. Then ye shall return unto the land of your possession and enjoy it, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, which Moses, the Lord's servant, gave you on this side, Jordan, toward the sun rising. So don't enjoy your possession until you, until you help others. If you're helping others, you can enjoy your possession better. And in 1 Timothy 6, 17, what does it say? It says, He giveth us all things to enjoy. Verse 16 <laughs> and they answered Joshua, saying, All that, that that thou commandest us we will do, and whithersoever thou sendest us we will go. 
You see, Jesus is your Joshua. You do what he says do and go where he says go, just like they was with Joshua here. According as we hearken unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. So they're going to do whatever Joshua says on one condition as long as the Lord God is with him. You know, they didn't, uh, they didn't always hearken to Moses now. But they're saying that they're, as they followed Moses, they're going to follow him. And they're going to follow Joshua as long as he follows God. You can follow any man as long as he's following God. 1 Corinthians 11, 1, Paul said, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. And they're saying they're going to follow him as long as he follows the Lord. Now, verse 17, According as we hearkened unto Moses in all things, so will we hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee, as he was with Moses. Whosoever he be that doth rebel against thy commandment, and will not hearken unto thy words, and all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong and have a good courage. A picture of... Uh, of a Christian having to cut off fellowship because it says all that thou commandest him and somebody that will not hearken unto the words and all that thou commandest him, they're going to put him to death. That's a picture of a Christian having to cut off fellowship. Now, obviously, we don't put people to death. You know, that's we're, we're in a spiritual war here. And we're not like what they got going on where they're, their warf warfare is physical. Our, our warfare is spiritual. But it's a picture. You see, the one that rebels has asked to be put to death. And that's a picture of your flesh. Your flesh, every day, you need to reckon it to be dead. You need, Like Paul said, I die daily. And your flesh doesn't want to hearken to Joshua. It doesn't want to hearken to the Lord Jesus Christ. And it said, whosoever. That means anybody, whosoever, whether it was a big shot or a little shot in Israel, if they did not hearken to Joshua, they'd be put to death. No respect of persons. Nobody gets a pass. And, and you know, Joshua, this is a loaded book. This is a loaded chapter. I still got another lesson I'm going to do on Joshua chapter 1. But it's just it's just endless. You can go and go and go with it. And I'm just I mean, I'm even looking over it right now to make sure I got all I wanted to say. But I think I'll go ahead and stop there. And in the next lesson, I'm going back over Joshua chapter one, with talking about some other things. <laughs>